Hi everybody, my name is Jason DeWild. I'm the head of audio here at the Australian Institute of Music and welcome to another micro lecture. Last time we talked about in the how to series where we talked about how to record an acoustic guitar. Today we're going to be talking about how to record vocals. Now the thing about with vocals is that it makes such a huge difference to the distance between the vocalist and the microphone. So we're going to be looking at that today and also we're going to be looking about the effect of the pop filter on the sound of uh, the vocal as well. So for that we've got our vocalist Katie Carr who's great and you can uh, check her out on YouTube as well. Also if you want to look at the acoustic recording uh, micro lecture it's right here. Let's get started. So here we are. Hi, Katie. How are you doing? Good. Good. How are you? So what we're going to do is we're going to try uh, you singing from three different distances, from the distance, then up a little bit closer, and then very, very close to the microphone there. And we're going to listen to each three as we go. Now, for those of you at home, this is going straight into Pro Tools. So there's no processing, nothing along the way. It's the straight audio file, microphone, straight in. This is a uh, U87 microphone, by the way. It's used a lot in studios, but any large diaphragm microphone is great for uh, recording vocals. So let's hear Katie now. Summertime and the living is easy. Fish are jumping and the cotton is high. So with that one, um, we had Katie from quite a distance away, probably a good three or four feet. And with that, you're going to pick up a lot of the room sound of the microphone. What it does tend to do is to make the vocal sound very, very smooth, but there's a lot of that room sound. And sometimes that's actually really good. Instead of using a reverb, you can make the actual distance between the microphone and the singer much further to give you that background vocal type technique. Now let's move Katie forward to a sort of the more sort of normal position, which is probably um, maybe uh, half a foot away from the microphone itself. And don't forget, in this whole tutorial, you should be listening on headphones, because that's where you're going to really get the differences between each technique. Let's try Katie now from half a foot away. Summertime and the living is easy. Fish are jumping and the cotton is high. So with that one, it's a much more normal distance, but the whole advantage of that, it's picking up little subtleties of the vocal performance. The little S's, the little T's in the line, and that makes it really, really nice and just very nice and crisp as well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move it forward very, very close. And this is great if you want to pick up that sort of more intimate kind of line, the one where you, you need the vocals to be really close to you. But what it's also going to do is it's going to increase the bass. And as you get closer to these microphones, the bass gives a real prominent boost. And we're going to hear that as Katie gets literally inches away from the mic. Let's have a listen to that now. Summer time and the living is easy. Fish are jumping and the cotton is high. All right, so you notice with that one, it's very, very close, very intimate, and it's really good to get your vocalist to do that on certain lines that really require that. But the big problem that we heard was that little plosive in the word jumping, okay? So what we're going to do to sort of combat that plosive is introduce the pop filter. It's given the name so to stop the plosive happening into the microphone, that push of air that goes into the mic, and we're going to put the pop filter there to see and get rid of that. And let's have a listen to how that goes. Okay, so this is the pop filter. This is a professional pop filter, and, but really all it is, it's, um, it's a plastic ring with um, sort of a hessian material. It's actually almost like a stocking material. Um, and this is um, just to stop the puff of air that comes from the singer's mouth into the microphone. Now you can actually use a coat hanger with a stocking material wrapped around it. It's gonna do exactly the same thing. So we're gonna put the pop filter quite close. 
So we still want to get that intimacy in the vocal performance, but we do want to stop the plosive. So this pop filter is as close to the mic as it can possibly go. Um, I've got it maybe an inch or so away. And now we're going to move Katie to about that same kind of distance of, again, and let's try and have a listen to it from here. Summertime and the living is easy. Fish are jumping and the cotton is high. Okay, so you've seen how the distance between the sound source and the microphone makes a difference to the sound. Now that's quite obvious, but why would you actually do that? Well, you know, some people, they say, I want the vocals to sound like they are in the background. I want it to sound like it's further away. And most people rely on things like reverb and things like that to help it. But by actually miking it from a distance gives that a more natural background sound to give you that, that so your recording has actually been made from further away. When you come in closer, um, you're going to get more of the direct sound, which is good. And then when you come closer still, you're getting that real intimate sound. And that may be what you're going to want for certain lines that really where you want the emphasis happening. So use the distance. Don't forget the pop filter to get rid of those plosives. And don't forget to check out the other how-to micro lectures and all the other micro lectures in the series. Until next time, take care.